Thank you for joining today. Uh, I'd like to also thank the organizers of the, uh, the session for inviting me to talk on this subject. So when we talk about cardiac malposition, we're talking about the heart not residing in the normal place where we see uh, a normal heart in the left side of the chest uh, with the apex pointed to the left. And so there's several different causes for that, the most common of which is complex congenital heart disease, including heterotaxy syndrome, a, a subject that's very complex, and I'll go over just briefly near the end of the presentation. Also, mass effect, when we have something like a mass or a, a tumor or something else, shifting the heart to the right, uh, occupying the left side of the chest and shifting the heart rightward. Mirror image dextrocardia is another reason, as well as right lung hypoplasia or a genesis failure to develop uh, of a development of the right lung. And also scimitar syndrome uh, will cause the heart to shift to the right as well. And so there, as you can see, there are many different uh, orientations of the heart and these different types of uh, problems and entities, some of which the heart is shifted to the right and the apex is pointed to the right, but some of them, uh, like scimitar syndrome, where the heart is mid, the heart is rightward, but the apex is shifted midline. And so your approach to these patients, it's very nice to have that imaging that we just looked at. We have a history and know that the patient has dextrocardia, whether it's CT, MR, or X-ray. Those are valuable, very valuable. Also looking around on the chest, if you're not finding the heart in the typical position, uh, left peristernal, left, ap left apical views, you go to the subcostal view and you use your scouting uh, to look up into the chest to find uh, where the heart is in space. You want to replicate standard views with slight changes to normal, and I'll go over what those changes are. Uh, and also, we use the sequential segmental approach in pediatrics. It helps us put the heart together uh, from the segments to, to understand the connections. And so here we are in a peristernal long axis view, left lateral decubitus, and we have the patient uh, scanning from the left peristernal view again, and we're not getting much in the way of an image and we're moving around trying to find where the heart might be and, and to, to no avail, we, we just can't see anything. And so our next uh, approach, our next uh, step should be to lay the patient down in the, in the uh, supine position and, and do a subcostal scan. And so as we're scanning up into the chest with the marker pointed to the left in the typical uh, orientation, we see that the heart is to the right and the apex is to the right in dextrocardia. And so in this case, as we're scanning from this position and we know the heart is on the right, we can formulate our approach. And so I would put the probe on the right peristernal, um, uh, right next to the sternum, opposite of where I would put it in the left uh, peristernal view. And I would also have the patient up on his or her right lateral decubitus. Uh, and that would give us a typical view, hopefully, that we are looking for in this case. And so the differences between scanning a patient who has left uh, levocardia and with the heart on the left and a dextrocardia with the heart on the right with the apex pointed to the right is that the placement of the peristernal view, obviously you're gonna have left peristernal view uh, placement where the, uh, the red circle with yellow and red dot is, that's the placement of the probe and then the arrow is the marker. And for the dextrocardia patient, the, the marker would be oriented again to the base of the, of the heart toward the left shoulder, opposite of what we would see, and the uh, probe placement is on the right peristernal view. Clockwise rotation for the peristernal short axis view and the levocardia heart on the left. For the dextrocardia heart, again, clockwise rotation is very important because this helps us maintain left-right spatial relationship. And so for the apical placement, Again, for the levocardia heart, it's a standard place where we put the, uh, the probe at the apex point of maximal impulse. We have the marker pointed to the left. All you do for dextrocardia is you move it to the right apical position and you keep the marker pointed to the left. Very important. I know it's gonna look a little odd. Here's a peristernal long axis view of this patient who has mirror image dextrocardia. Looks like a normal, typical peristernal long axis view. Rotate clockwise and you see that that is not the case. This is inverted ventricular arrangement. You have L-looped ventricles, which is typical with mirror image dextrocardia, right ventricles on the left, left ventricles on the right. This looks very odd, but this is the right way to display this. Aortic valve up a little on the base of the heart. You have the right atrium here, the left atrium here, atrial septum, aortic valve. Sweep up a little more basal 
you get the pulmonary valve RVOT opposite of what you would see it in a levocardial heart with normal arrangement. And you have the LPA looking like an RPA going behind the aorta and RPA here going off to the right lung. Typical arrangement for mirror dextrocardia. Left atrium here connected to the left ventricle, but these were on the right, right atrium, right ventricle on the left. And that pulmonary, the pulmonary veins drain into the left atrium there. And we're seeing the aorta come off in the opposite fashion as we would see it if, the, if that all was on the left mirrored over. Typical arrangement for dex, mirror image dextrocardia. This is the way it should look. If you're scanning a patient who has mirror image dextrocardia, it looks odd, it looks backwards, but this is the right way to display it in any patient who has this uh, problem. And so the sequential segmental approach is just that. We put the heart together in segments. The atrium connect to the ventricles and then the ventricles connect to the arteries. And we have to see those connections and describe them the way we see them. So the atrial segment, the, the atrium uh, receive the veins. The right atrium obviously receives the cavy, the superior and inferior cavy. Left atrium receives pulmonary veins, and they're arranged on the left for left atrium, on the right for right atrium. Mirror image dextrocardia, you're going to have the LA on the left, on the right, uh, and the right atrium on the left, and you have the, the typical um, drainage of the veins is, is just mirrored over from what it would typically be. And for the panel all the way here to the right, this is an atrial ambiguous, and we have heterotaxy where you have a mixture of systemic and pulmonary venous uh, drainage into this common atrium, bilateral left atrial appendages here. So that's typically what we see in heterotaxy. So you want to make sure that the connections are uh, described properly. And so in the normal situation, you have concordant uh, connections. We have the left atrium con uh, connected to an LV, the RA connected to an RV, and that's normal. Uh, and discordant, you'll have an LA connected to an RV and a RA connected to an LV. And we see this most commonly in congenitally corrected transposition or what we call LTGA. Uh, and a common AV connection, we're gonna have the LA and RA connected through a common AV valve to the LV and RV. Uh, in this case, on the left panel, you see that the ventricles are arranged normally underneath the, the respective atria, still considered a common connection. An ambiguous connection will have usually a common connection with a common atrium, whether it's left atrial isomerism or right atrial isomerism, where you have bilateral right atria, and again, a mixture of uh, uh, venous return to this common atrium. Usually in right isomerism, you have total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage, uh, but again, through a common valve to the right ventricle and left ventricle. So the ventricles are usually identified best by their internal uh, morphology. And so a smooth LV with apical trabeculations, two papillary muscles along the free wall. And for an RV, we typically have the moderator band, which everyone knows about. You have this ventricular infundibular fold between the tricuspid and pulmonary valves, and you have septal attachments of the tricuspid valve, uh, not seen in the RV. And so that's how we identify the ventricles. For the ventricular segment, uh, when we talk about looping, and this can confuse people, what we're really talking about, a de-looped heart is a normal heart ventricular arrangement. And so what we have is where we're talking about where the RV ends up at the end of the loop. And so normal arrangement would be the RV ending up on the right side, the LV ending up on the left. And so that's a de-looped heart. Uh, for L-looping, we see that commonly in congenitally corrected uh, transposition or LTGA where the RV ends up on the left. And that could be the same uh, if the heart is shifted to the right and you have dextrocardia, but you have the RV on the left, it's still considered an L-looped heart. It's very confusing, but it makes sense. And this just really describes the spatial position of the ventricles within the heart. Great example, this patient has dextrocardia and we're seeing the LA connected to the RV. And again, the marker is oriented uh, to the left, the probe is on the right apical position. We have the LA connected to a morphologic RV. You clearly see the moderator band here. So this is inverted matricular arrangement uh, and you have an L-looped arrangement in this case. This uh, patient with situs inversus, you have the liver on the left, you have the IVC aorta here, stomach over here. This is situs inversus of the viscera, sweeping up into the chest. Clearly, you see that the heart is in the right chest with the apex pointed right and very complicated uh, AV discordance here. You have right atrium connected to the LV, but the LV is on the left. 
and vice versa, the LA is connected to the RV on the right. Very uh, um, complicated, congenitally corrected transposition, but you can see how you can put these blocks together when you just kind of identify the different parts of the heart uh, and connect them up using the segmental approach. Very effective. Again, this is that same heart in the apical view. You have the LA on the, on the, on the right, the RA on the left. Again, this is a dextrocardia where you have the probe over the right apical view and you have the marker in the typical position. In that same patient, we're going up to the parasternal view. And again, we wanna make sure that we get the views in the right uh, to make them look more like standard views. And so this is a short axis view where you're having the LV on the left and the RV on the right, but the RV gives rise to the aorta. So this is where we're gonna do our parasternal long axis view and we'll align it in a way that transects the tricuspid valve and the aortic valve, and we'll rotate 90 degrees to for a parasternal long axis view, and this should give us this view here. And so we have the aorta coming off of this morphologic RV, and we can see this ventricular and fundibular fold here, heavily trabeculated. We have a moderator band down here, and this next view just kind of gives you an idea of the difference between a morphologic LV, nice and smooth walled, you have the aorta, uh, and continuity with the anterior mitral valve leaflet. And here you have the aorta discontinuous with the tricuspid valve with this ventricular and infundibular fold there, a, a feature only seen in a morphologic RV. So we talk about heterotaxy and specifically patients who have heterotaxy with dextrocardia. Not every heterotaxy case will have dextrocardia. In this case, we're showing left atrial isomerism on the left and right atrial isomerism on the right. And really it's just symmetrical arrangement or bilateral same-sidedness. And so you'll have everything mirrored from the atria and the viscera. Again, the ventricles will, and the arteries will be uh, either L-looped or D-looped, not two LVs and two RVs, but you'll typically have the visceroatrial following, the viscera following the atrial arrangement. So left isomerism, is bilateral left-sidedness with two left atria or a common left atrium, and the same thing with right isomerism. And typical features of left-sided structures uh, prevailing in left isomerism, right-sided structures prevailing in right isomerism. Very complex. It uh, takes a whole nother talk, uh, in my opinion, an hour-long talk to describe that, but we see that very commonly in patients who have dextrocardia. So it's important to understand it. And so this is a patient who has left atrial isomerism, and you see this big midline liver, symmetrical uh, hepatic veins draining into a common atrium here. Again, dextrocardia, it ends up on the right. Uh, here's where we have the probe placed. The marker again is pointed to the left. And we turn this up. Uh, typical um, orientation for pediatrics, we have it uh, uh, anatomically correct, where you have the the same orientation, the apex is pointed to the right again. And then from the apical view, we'll see that the RV is on the left, the LV is on the right. So these are inverted and we're sweeping up and we're seeing the vessels come off of that RV. And so that's a sort of a double outlet right ventricle arrangement. We can do a little more uh, interrogating of that, but it just gives you an idea of how this is a more of a common atrium as a complete AV septal defect but the ventricular arrangement is pretty clear to see where you have this big, heavily trabeculated RV on the left and smooth walled LV on the right. Parasternal long axis view, again, that parasternal long axis view is on the right parasternal view with a marker pointed again toward the left shoulder, typical arrangement, and parasternal short axis rotate clockwise, marker is pointed toward four o'clock. This again shows ventricular uh, inversion where you have the LV on the left, or RV on the left and, a, and an LV on the right. Excuse me, see, it's even confusing for me. So, and again, sweeping up to the base of the heart, you have this inverted uh, uh, vessel arrangement where you have the aorta here, the SVC, you can actually see the SVC here. And the, uh, it's inverted from what we typically see, the PA branches, and it's to the left, to the right of the aorta. The aorta is to the right, uh, to the left. Again, the pulmonary artery is to the right. And this is inverted from what we typically see in a normal arrangement. So in summary, uh, you want to use these scouting views in a patient who you can't really get good views in the typical uh, fashion where you're having a patient laying on the left lateral decubitus and you're trying to get those pictures. Use some scouting views. 
You want to try to follow the, the sequential segmental analysis approach if you can. Uh, it's the best way to, to, to figure out piece by piece how the heart is connected up together. Uh, and make sure you remember the clockwise rotations. Very important in patients. You don't want to try to make it look like the typical normal left arrangement where you have the LV on the L on the left and the RV on the on the right. If it's ventricular, if the ventricle, uh, ventricular arrangement is inverted, you want to show it that way and clockwise rotations maintain that left right uh, relationship. And also patients who are larger than 30 kilograms or roughly 30 kilograms, you want to have them up on their right lateral decubitus and that will give you the best results uh, to see uh, scan a patient who has dextrocardia. Thank you so much.